Hey guys, welcome back to Armored Warfare. It's Sager262 and I'm doing another news episode. Now as you can see, I got a few of the news articles up here, but I only want to talk about one of them really. But first, after the update on Wednesday where we got the banner customization option and there was a lot of confusion and upset over that, since then there has been talks between the moderators of the forums and other community con or content creators rather and the devs and there's a possibility that they are discussing changing it that's sort of the unofficial word throughout the armor warfare community right now is that the 9999 gold price point is not only ridiculous but doesn't make a whole lot of sense and so the reason that we're actually getting a conversation about this is obviously because of all the upset created by that. And that doesn't mean like a lot of players were ups you know, outraged by it. Some people were, I'm sure. But the upset comes from just this really weird confusion. People didn't know why they would implement this feature, why they spent more time implementing this feature than just giving us the rest of the French tech tree, um, why... They're talking about developing more battle paths and changing things when clearly their kind of paywall system is exactly the same as it was for the first battle path. And so there's just been a lot of confusion, a lot of negative stuff around that topic. But it might change. Now that's not official. Um, My.com hasn't said anything to that. And to be honest with you guys, I highly doubt it'll change. But... If you want to hold out hope, go ahead. <laughs> Second part of this is, I just had a quick question. They talked about this hype application. Uh, it's a community created tool to kind of map out where you stand in the rest of the Armored Warfare world. And so it kind of works like XVM if you play World of Tanks. And basically what it is, is a calculator. You put in all your battles, all your stats, and it tells you on a rating system of 100 to like 1500 and up where you stand and how good of a player you are. Now the reason I bring that up is because I used it and it's a pretty nifty um, app but um, mine's broken. Uh, I did everything it told me to do and it gave me just 99999 as my result and said that I was like way at the top. And the reason I know that's not true is because my win rate's not that good. It's not good enough for me to be that great. So if anybody uses this app or knows how to use it, let me know. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong, but it mostly works on all the stats come from your PvP. And then at the very end, it asks you for your PvE and Global Ops stats. And you put those in, and then it calculates it. So again, I don't know how it works, but if anybody else does... Let me know in the comments below because I have no idea how to use it. Now that brings us to the actual reason I'm making this video today, and that is the M95 Degman, which is the Croatian main battle tank, or would have been had it seen mass production. Now again, just like the last video I did on the BVP M80A, I will not be doing this whole article. I will give you some facts. Uh, this sums it up pretty good. It's basically a copy of the T72, but it's not a T72 at all. That right there. That sums up the entire article. If you want to go and read it, go ahead. Um, it's really interesting if you don't know anything about it. But if not, I'm going to give you the highlights about why this is another interesting addition. and something that I think is really cool, but I'm still worried about how the battle path will work. Now, the M95 is a vehicle I've waited to see in Armored Warfare for a little bit. It's not one of my top five. I know I did a video on that a long time ago. But I did want to see it. I wanted to see more, you know, uses of the same chassis that are in, and this is the actual M95 right here. So you can tell that are already in the game. And what I mean by that is, like, I talked to you about the modular design of modern vehicles multiple times. This is, for all intents and purposes, a T72 copy licensed in Croatia. And the entire turret and that's why i have this picture up here so you can see you can clearly see it's a t72 chassis but everything other than the chassis is different all the way down to the engine and how the transmission works and everything internally including the turret which is 100 percent ex external and internal stuff 
all Croatian, all indigenous to Croatia, which is why this tank is so special. Um, because they could have put in the M84, which was the actual and still is the actual MBT of Croatia, which is basically, again, a licensed C-72 with Western tank parts put into it. However, this is not that. This is a completely Croatian vehicle. And so it's just an interesting way to implement the T-72 chassis into the game without, which we already have, five T-72s in the game. We don't need that many, so it's just nice to finally get this vehicle. The only problem with it is, of course, it's a Battle Path vehicle, and it's at Tier 6. Battle Path problem is that who knows how easy it'll be to get these vehicles. Maybe not a lot of players will actually get to experience this new content without, you know, grinding a lot through the Battle Path or just buying it, and that's kind of the problem that Maya.com has with bringing us new content, and so I never like to see really interesting vehicles locked behind some kind of event. One. Two, because it's tier six, and I'll get down into that part of the article here, it's going to play like the T-72A, which is the tier five T-72. But they put it at tier six, and basically what they've done to justify that is they've removed the option to take the Croatian 125 out. So unlike the BVP where you got those three turret options, which I thought was really cool, they did the opposite here. So if anybody's played the Leopard line, at tier six, the Leopard gets the choice between the 105 millimeter gun that the actual Leopard 2 had, or using the new 120 millimeter, which was the Leopard 2 AV, I believe, which had that gun. This vehicle is the exact same. It got a 125 millimeter Croatian gun which will play like every T-72 in the game. However, and you can see right here, they had an option for a 120mm NATO smoothbore gun built, I believe, in Germany. And that was so that way they could sell it as an export weapon system. Because at the time that this tank was being built, late 90s, early 2000s, a lot of the world still used NATO rounds and were up to NATO standards. So to make it more viable, they gave it this gun. But for Armored Warfare, they completely removed the 125. Not optional. You have to play with the NATO gun. And the reason they did that is because they balanced it. You can see it right here. They balanced the gun to be exactly the same as a Tier 8 Challenger Falcon. Now, obviously, this is probably going to change, and it's subject to change, because that would be ridiculous. That would be a Tier 8 gun at Tier 6. The reason I don't think it's going to change is because once you get into it, it has good gun depression, 6 degrees, 13 elevation, talks about its targeting, they're going to make it worse than the Leopard 2 AV, so it's less accurate, which is also going to be less accurate than the Falcon, and as far as the actual vehicle goes, it's not going to play like any of the T-72s. They say it'll resemble mostly the same as the T-72A, but what they mean by that is, if you read the sentence, it's actually talking about its armor. And so what that means is you will have the armor of a Tier 5 tank with the gun of a Tier 8 tank at Tier 6. So it's basically going to be like another Chinese main battle tank where it's very fast, very thinly armored, with decent guns. Not the best. And so... The reason I have a problem with this is that while it's really cool and we're getting a new vehicle, this seems like right now initially it's going to be a glass cannon um, kind of tank. It's not going to be able to take a lot of hits, it's not going to be able to really defend itself frontally, and its gun is going to be way overmatched for its tier. And the only reason I have a problem with that is because if we get up tiered in this vehicle, which is going to happen, because that's how MM works, it means the most likely scenario when you play this vehicle is instead of giving you, when you're top tier 6, seeing tier 5s and tier 4s, or if you're just mid-tier, seeing only tier 7s, and then your gun's amazing, what's going to happen is you're most likely going to see tier 8 and up in this vehicle. What I mean by that is, obviously you can't see tier 9, but most of the games in Armored Warfare now don't actually have a good spread. And so it's going to be mostly tier 8s, and you'll see games like this where there's only like one tier 7, and they fill in the rest of the gap there with tier 6s. This vehicle, I predict, will be that tier 6 go-to to fill in the gaps in tier 8 games. 
because of its gun. And so it's it's a great vehicle. I love that Armored Warfare is putting this vehicle into play. Um, I love that they're entertaining the idea of giving us another kind of European but also unique vehicle. Um, it's just in terms of how valuable these vehicles are going to be compared to how hard players are going to have to work to get them. And I haven't seen the new battle path, so I have no idea how hard it's going to be. I'm just going off of the last one. If you're doing that much to get a vehicle, maybe being unique isn't just like the best way to go. Like I absolutely love having Croatian MBT in the game. That's amazing. But one that's going to be so lightly armored and have just this crazy great gun and that's like the only thing that it has going for it I'm not crazy about it I mean it seems like they're putting a mediocre tank behind an event and calling it new content which I don't know just seems odd I'm I'm cautiously optimistic, we'll say it that way. Love this, love what Armored Warfare is doing, but lately my .com has been a little weird with how they're releasing their quote-unquote new content. And so I'm cautiously optimistic about this vehicle and other Battle Path rewards. Hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully the Battle Path will be good. But for now, that's all the news I have. There's really no good or bad side to it. Again, these are all just my opinions. None of this stuff is confirmed because it is subject to change. These vehicles are not in the game yet. But read the article, check it out, see for yourself, make up your own opinions, and tell me what you think about this or how Armored Warfare is implementing these new tanks into the game in the comment section below. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more news. Thank you so much for watching.